Whiplash is back and on another adventure, but this time he's really overextended himself. In this sketch, we'll learn about the important clinical correlates of vertebral anatomy. Examiners like to test your knowledge of anatomy by showing you pathology and having you work backwards, identifying anatomical features that make them susceptible to injury. So let's get started with an example. There's a classic finding here on this lumbar film. Take a second to look at it. Feel free to pause. See what's wrong? If not, don't worry. This Scotty dog here will help you out. See, he has a collar on. Right at that collar line, there's a small fracture. We call this pathologic finding spondylolysis and the radiological finding called the Scotty dog sign. Now, the fracture line extends through the part of the vertebra called the pars interarticularis, which is shown here. So if you see a lumbar spine x-ray with something that looks like a Scotty dog with a collar on, then you're dealing with spondylolysis. So to tie this all together for you, we have Parsons Pond here, pars for the pars interarticularis, and the S and P-O-N-D or spondylolysis. And of course, our Scotty dog is here to remind you of the pathognomonic binding on the imaging. Now, examiners may show an x-ray, but they're not testing our radiological abilities. They'll give you something in the question stem that will help clue you in. Spondylolysis is a relatively common injury in young athletes who do repetitive hyperextension of their spine, like dancers or gymnasts. So we have this young ballerina here in a hyperextended pose next to Parsons Pond to remind you of this key clue in the history. Now, there's another condition that sounds a lot like spondylolysis and often occurs after spondylolysis. It's called spondylolisthesis. After the pars interarticularis is fractured, the vertebral body can list or slide forward. So we have this toy sailboat here listing to the side to remind you that spondylolisthesis can occur after spondylolysis. Again, that's anterior sliding of the vertebral body. Hopefully this will help you keep those two straight. 